We're joined by Chris Heine, our extension equine specialist. And Chris, the way I understand it, horses sweat a lot and they sweat differently than humans do. Can you explain that for us? Sure, so horses can sweat at a rate that's much higher than humans. So they can sweat as much as 10 to 12 liters an hour. In addition, their sweat is either isotonic or hypotonic compared to their blood. So what that means, when we sweat, our blood gets higher in osmolarity, which is our stimulus to drink. Horses may not actually get that same stimulus, so they may need the water, but they may not actually be thirsty. So what can we do to get them to drink water on these hot July and August days when we know they need it? Probably the easiest thing to do is make sure water is always available. So I would always recommend if you're going to hang buckets in their stalls that you'd hang at least two buckets and fill them multiple times per day. Um, horses prefer to have larger reservoirs of water. So if you have uh, automatic water that doesn't have a very high flow rate or a shallow reservoir, they may not actually get enough to drink at that time, lose interest, wander off, and not have drank as much as they should have. So Joe here behind us is wanting to help out with this uh, demonstration today. Can we, there are some ways to, to check a horse to see if it's dehydrated. Can you, can you sure, demonstrate absolutely. on him? So the easiest thing to do um, is actually to do something that's simply called a skin fold test. So you'd grab some skin on the horse's neck, pull up and release. And so it should snap back rather quickly um, if the horse is well hydrated. The other thing we could do is look over their eye to see if it's rather sunken, um, or their eyes will get a little bit dull if the horse is actually dehydrated, or their gums may actually get a little bit tacky if we're looking at their mucous membranes. So in addition to having water available, what other kind of things can we do? The other critical thing is to make sure that they have enough salt. So horses obviously when they're sweating still do lose a fair amount of salt. Um, and so we typically would say a horse um, in the summer when he's sweating a lot is at least going to double his uh, salt requirement. And if you're working him additionally and he has a higher sweating rate because he's exercising as well, that can sometimes almost go up to three times their normal requirement. And some of these symptoms that you mentioned kind of go along with heat stress too? Absolutely. So a horse can quickly become heat stressed if they don't have enough water to essentially keep sweating, but they can get heat stressed in a couple hours in these really high summer temperatures um, just from all the muscular work of exercise or if they're on a trailer. So trailer um, doesn't have as much airflow normally as just being outside in the wind. Uh, plus they have all that muscular work of balancing, which puts an additional heat load on them. So they can get heat stress pretty quickly in those kind of conditions in the summer. And you say some of this stuff is common sense things that you just do to, to keep them cool and to keep them hydrated. But at what point would a horse owner need to call the veterinarian? What kind of signs would the horse be exhibiting? Well, if we're seeing a, a greatly increased heart rate, um, respiration rate, especially if your respiration rate is actually higher than your heart rate, that indicates that the horse is stressed. If he shows any sign of ataxia, kind of stumbling in coordination, those are pretty severe signs of heat stress and we'd want to actually get the vet to that horse. Um, as quickly as possible. Okay, I think he likes you. <laughs> Chris, thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Okay.